home ownership has hit the highest levels that we have seen in the United States since the 2008 crash. Coincidentally, home ownership is skyrocketing at the same time that mortgage delinquencies are skyrocketing. So if you are wondering what the heck is going on in the real estate world, you are in the right place. What's up everybody, I am Jasprit Singh from the MinorityMindset.com and welcome to the Minority Mindset. Right before the economy collapsed in 2008, about 68% of Americans were homeowners. In 2020, in the middle of a recession and in the middle of a pandemic, homeownership in America has skyrocketed up to 2008 levels at 67.9%. One of the biggest driving factors for this is that interest rates have crashed. So it is very cheap for you to go out and get a new mortgage and it's very cheap for you to go out and refinance your mortgage because you can save a lot of money on your loans. While this all sounds like good news, it's not so straightforward because real estate has been seeing some confusing headlines. One day they say that there's a tidal wave of evictions coming and many Americans will be homeless. The next day you hear that home prices are soaring because people are buying homes like crazy and that's when you hear the headline that real estate prices could be collapsing. So if you are confused, you're not alone. That's why in this video, I'm going to be going over what's actually going on in the whole real estate market. That way you can make smart decisions with your money. So make sure you watch this video until the end because you don't want to miss any of these key details. But before we get into that, hit that thumbs up button below because if you don't, well, the way the YouTube algorithm works, then YouTube will be less likely to show you any of our other financial education videos. Right now, there are a lot of people and young people going out and buying homes because interest rates are dirt cheap. So people want to take advantage of these cheap loans. The surge in demand to buy a home is pushing up the price of real estate, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic slash recession. On the flip side, we have a lot of homeowners and tenants that do not have the money to make their housing payments. So we could be seeing a wave of evictions and foreclosures. And I'll be talking more about this in just a minute. I think that plays a big part in home ownership rates is the cost to own a home, right? I mean, if you can't afford a home, you're probably not going to own a home. Well, the cost of home ownership depends on two things. It's the price to buy the home, and then it's the cost of the mortgage debt. Mortgage rates are controlled by the Federal Reserve Bank, and housing prices are controlled by supply and demand. Well, the Federal Reserve Bank has cut interest rates to unbelievable lows. Like, these are the lowest mortgage rates that we have ever seen because they believe that if people go out and start buying homes, then it will stimulate the economy, and we will get pulled out of this recession. Home prices depend on how many buyers and sellers there are. Like, if you have a lot more buyers than sellers for real estate, then this is going to push the price of real estate up because all these buyers are going to compete against each other to buy real estate. Uh, did you just offer $400,000 for the home? We'll all offer four twenty-five. dollars These low interest rates have brought in a new wave of home buyers and now all these home buyers are competing against each other to buy real estate and these home buyers are now pushing the price of real estate up. At the time of me recording this video, 67.9% of Americans are homeowners. That is the highest home ownership rate that we have seen in America since 2008 when the whole financial market collapsed. Now that you understand where our real estate market is now, let's look forward to see where our real estate market is going. And the best way to look forward is by looking backward to see what's happened in the past. Prior to the 2008 crash, Home ownership was breaking record highs because banks had crazy incentives for you to buy a home. I mean, there was no income verification. There was no job verification. All you had to do was go to the bank and tell them how much money you wanted and you could walk out with a loan and a free TV. Ah, so Mr. Bunty, it looks like you were trying to get a $500,000 loan and you have no job. Well, I see here that I can give you a $600,000 loan and a free slushy machine. How does that sound? Home ownership peaked in 2004 when 70% of Americans were homeowners. Then in 2005 and 2006, home ownership started to trickle down a little bit because Americans were getting hit with higher interest rates and some foreclosures. And then in 2007 and 2008, home ownership came down to 67.8%, which is where we are right now. And that's when the real estate market really collapsed and home ownership tanked until 2016. Now in 2020, home ownership is just under 68%, so we're still a little bit below where we were back in 2004. But another thing that I want you to pay attention to is the speed at which home ownership is growing. In 2019, home ownership was around 65.1%. Now in 2020, home ownership is at around 67.9%. 
So we're talking about more than a 2.5% jump in home ownership in just one year. That's the fastest growth we've ever seen. Back in the 2000s, during the real estate boom, the fastest jump in home ownership that we saw was something like half of 1% over a year. Now in 2020, in the middle of a recession, we have seen home ownership jump by about five times faster than we saw back in the 2000s. However, this research came with a little bit of a disclaimer because before this pandemic, researchers would gather their information through phone calls and in-person interviews. Now during this pandemic, researchers have been getting all their information just through phone calls and no in-person interviews, so there's a chance that some of this information is skewed. We won't know the real answer to this for a little while, but this is definitely something you want to keep your eye on because there's no doubt that real estate has been booming and you never want to see an asset class grow too big too fast. Before I get into what could cause real estate prices to come down in the future, if you are thinking about buying a home or if you already own a home and you have a mortgage on this home and you were thinking about refinancing, this is the best time in history to do that. Just make sure you're working with a reputable lender and make sure you're not overpaying on your loans. The simplest way to do that is by using a free mortgage comparison website like a sponsor Credible because you can look at pre-qualified mortgage rates and no cost to you. There are lots of lenders competing on Credible's marketplace so you can see all their great rates and pick the loan option or the mortgage refinance option that's best for you. All you have to do is go onto their website and enter in a few pieces of information, which just takes a few minutes, and a Credible will present you with actual rates from different lenders that way you can make sure you're getting the best rate possible. The pre-qualification process is easy, it only takes a few minutes, and checking pre-qualified rates does not affect your credit score. So if you have a mortgage, and you want to see how much money you can save by refinancing or if you were thinking about getting a new mortgage and you want to make sure you're getting the best rates, I got the link to where you can do that with Credible in the description below. Minority Mindset is a partner with Credible, so if you use them, we will get compensated, but there's no additional cost to you. I mean, the service is free for you to use, so if you want to learn more and get a free quote, I got the link to where you can do that in the description below. Remember what I said in the beginning of this video about how home prices depend on supply and demand? Well, up until now, there's been a relatively limited supply of homes available for sale. The only people that have been selling their homes are the people that want to sell and that are okay with random people walking through their home and potentially coughing on their sofa. <laughs> nice TV! <laughs> what I'm keeping my eye on right now is that more than 6% of homeowners are behind on their mortgages right now. That's the most early stage delinquencies that we have seen in decades. What I'm watching is how many of these delinquencies relate to the mortgage forbearance program that the government created and how many of these delinquencies turn into foreclosures. The CEO of CoreLogic, who is the company that studies mortgage delinquencies, says that he expects mortgage delinquencies to continue to go up for the next 12 to 18 months. If that happens and mortgage defaults rise and foreclosures rise, then we are gonna have a bigger supply of homes available for sale. And like I was saying before, if we have more sellers than buyers, then this will push the price of real estate down. Now, let me add in one more wild card to this equation. Housing agencies have banned evictions and foreclosures for this pandemic. Some states are now allowing evictions while others aren't, and some federal agencies are not allowing foreclosures to happen. So there's a lot of different factors at play, and it's hard to decipher everything because some of the numbers, we don't know how accurate they are. Like, I can read the data and see how many people are behind on their mortgages and their rent, but that doesn't tell the full story. Like, there are people in forbearance, and there are people that are behind on their mortgages that don't need to be, and there are people that are just waiting for their job to start back up in a week or two and then they'll be caught up with everything. And we also have a chunk of other people that, you know, unfortunately will not make it out of this financial crisis without foreclosure or bankruptcy. It is impossible to predict the future, which is why the best thing for you to do right now is one, if you have a mortgage, look into refinancing because these are the lowest interest rates we've ever seen. If you're getting a new mortgage, make sure you're getting the best interest rate possible. And I got the links for you in the description below. And if you're an investor, then make sure you're staying up to date on what's happening in the finance business world. And you want to especially stay up to date on what's happening as the government free money goes away. And if you're looking for an easy way to stay up to date on what's happening in the top finance and business news, well that's why we created the free Minority Mindset newsletter where our team first breaks down the top finance and business news and then we show you how this news affects your wallet that way you can be smart with your money. This newsletter is completely free and you can subscribe to our Minority Mindset newsletter by clicking the link up here or by clicking the link in the description below. By the way, our financial news emails are separate from our financial education emails.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, share it with one friend. That way we can help spread the word. If you want to learn more about how you can refinance your mortgage the right way, that way you can save the most money on your mortgage, I already made a video on this and you can watch this video on YouTube by clicking this button right over here. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.